Hi, this is video number one for chapter two. So this goes with section 2.1 in the book, and that's in 44 through 49 are the pages to look at if you wanna go see more examples or if you wanna look at the um, extra videos that are on the online book version. There's extra examples and videos there. So we're talking about rational numbers in this section. So there's two targets, write these down on your paper. After this section, we should be able to convert between different forms of rational numbers and also compare and put rational numbers in order, so knowing how to compare the size of them. So, first thing would be to figure out what rational numbers are. So on the next slide, we'll talk about some vocab. And the first one is, what is a rational number? So a rational number has a little bit of a confusing definition, but we'll look at examples. It's any number that can be written as a ratio, A over B. So some examples of rational numbers would be five, positive five, because I could write five over one. That's a ratio of one to five, or five to one. I could say negative three is a rational number, because I could write negative three over one. But all of your fractions are also rational numbers, like two-thirds, five-sevenths, and the positive or negative versions of those are all rational numbers. Non-examples. The, the non-examples are almost easier. Non-examples are anything that's just a decimal that keeps going with no pattern, no, um, it doesn't end and it doesn't repeat, it would just keep going. So things like pi, if you know pi is uh, 3.14259 and it keeps going, it never ends, those decimals that keep going are not rational numbers. But anything else that you could write as a ratio or a fraction is. So there's two types of decimals that you're going to see in this section or in this chapter. The first one is terminating decimals. If something terminates, it means it ends. So decimals that just end, 0 0.5, 0 0.75, 0 0.62, those are all terminating decimals. They just stop. They don't have any more numbers that keep going. Repeating decimals are decimals that have patterns, 0 0.111 repeating. 0.53 repeating, so 0.53535353. Anything that has a pattern that keeps going, sometimes you'll see them like 0.83 and just the threes keep repeating. Those are repeating decimals. Both of these types of decimals are examples of rational numbers. So besides knowing what a rational number is, we're gonna go on to the next section. We have to be able to convert between forms of rational numbers. So we saw that we had some whole numbers, some mixed numbers, some fractions, some decimals, and they could all be different forms of rational numbers. So we need to know how to go back and forth between them. So we're gonna do quick, um, two quick examples of our long division again. If they give me a mixed number, I should be able to write it as a decimal, and that's gonna take long division if I don't have a calculator. So here we go. I'm gonna take this whole number part and just bring it off to the side so that I can work on the fraction part and turn that into a decimal. So one fourth means I want to do the long division for one divided by four, which would set up like that. One ca or four can't fit into one, so I put a decimal and a zero, and now I'm looking at can four go into 10? And it does, it fits in twice. I put my decimal up here too. Fits in twice, so two times four is eight. Subtract those, I have a remainder of two, bring down another zero, I have to keep going. So now four into 20, and it fits in five times. Five times four is exactly 20, so I have no remainder, and I'm done. So this decimal and this whole number, negative 2.25 is my final answer. Okay, let's try one more. Five elevenths means I wanna do five divided by 11. 11 doesn't fit into five, so I add a zero and a decimal place, decimal point, put the decimal point in your answer. 11 into 50, well, it goes in four times. That gives me 44, remainder of six. Bring down a zero, we gotta keep going, so now 11 into 60. Well, that would fit in five times. Five times 11, 55. So I get a remainder of five. Bring down another zero. Well, if you notice, um, now I'm looking at how many times 11 goes into 50, and that's what I started with right here at the beginning. So you might notice it here. It's going to keep going. I'm going to keep getting the same pattern over and over. 
Once you realize there's a pattern, you can just stop and put that repeating bar over your answer to say it keeps repeating that same pattern. So the next slide has some practice for you. So these are going to involve some long division. Go ahead and do those. Pause the video, try them, and then we'll come back and check. So pause now. So here's your answers. I wanted to show the long division in case you needed to check it. In the first one, five does fit into six actually. So I get this whole number, one, and then I kept going uh, to get the decimal part. So it's negative 1.2. And in the next one, I just kept this 7 over to the side and then uh, found the decimal part and then I put them together as my final answer. So again, it's a negative, negative uh, 7.375. Here's our next slide. Let me change my pen back, sorry. We're going to go back to um, converting uh, decimals back into mixed numbers. So we did this before a little bit with our fraction review too. So this tells me that I have a whole number a whole number two, and then I need to convert this decimal part into a fraction. So we said the name of that decimal is 26 hundredths, and that can get simplified if I reduce it down. So let's divide by two, and that would give me, what, 13 fiftieths, and I think that's as far as I can go. So my final answer should be this whole number two, and the, no decimal, sorry, the 13 fiftieths. How about the next one? Keep your whole number just off to the side. Let's change this 0.15 into a fraction. Um, get my pen. So 15 hundredths would look like that. I need to simplify it down. Looks like maybe I can divide by 5. And I would get 15 divided by 5 and 100 divided by 5. So there's the decimal part. Now I just have to put it together. My whole number the negative three and the decimal. So there's your final answer. This is practice for you. So turn these decimals into mixed numbers. So pause it here and try it. So here's the answer. In the first one, I kept this four and just brought it down. I turned the 0.88 when it was simplified into 22 25ths, and then I put it all together for my final answer. And this one again, keep the three as your whole number, turn 20. One hundredths simplified down into one fifth, so three and one fifth. And our last uh, type of problem in this section is going to be to put numbers in order, put all the rational numbers in order. So in this one, I have one, two, three, four numbers. Looks like they're all negatives, so I know that when I put them in order, they're all going to be to the left of zero on the number line. So the easiest way to do a problem like this is to get them all in the same form. And decimals are probably going to be easiest. So I'm going to have to change 5 ninths into a decimal, negative 1 and 3 fourths into a decimal, negative 13 eighths into a decimal, and then this one's the negative 0.6 is good to go. So let's set it up. Negative 5 ninths. That means I'm going to have to do some more long division. Okay, so we'll set that up. <clears throat> that decimal answer, remember it's going to be a negative. Um, Let's try it real quick. 9 doesn't fit into 5, so 9 into 50 goes in 5 times. That's 45. I'm going to keep getting this same pattern over and over. So I can see it's going to be 5 again. That's just 45. So I know it's just going to be 0.55 repeating, negative 0.55 repeating. That's my first one. Over here, negative 1 and 3 fourths. I'm going to have to do some more division for 3 fourths. 4 doesn't fit into 3, but it can fit into 30, let's see, uh, 7 times. So 7 times 4 is 28, and then I have a leftover 2, bring down a 0, 4 fits into 25 times. Maybe you remember that 3 fourths is the same as 0.75. Okay, so we got that one. So this is going to be negative 1.75. And then um, I'll let you pause and change the 13 eighths into a decimal. It might help if you want to write it as a mixed number first. So 8 fits into 13 one time with 5 left over. So pause right now and turn that 1 and 5 eighths, negative 1 and 5 eighths, into um, a decimal. And then we'll come back and put them in order. So go ahead, pause, do that long division. Okay, so you can see I finished the long division, and that one gave me 
right here, 0.625. So when I put it back with my whole number, negative 1.625. So let's write those four numbers down. I have negative 0.55 repeating. I have um, negative 1.75. I have negative 1.625. And then back from my original problem, I have negative 0.6. Yep. Okay. So there's my four numbers. I've moved my number line down just a little bit. Let me put it a tiny bit lower so we have room. I'm going to set this up. I know I have to go from zero, counting back towards my negatives. I need it all to fit between zero and negative two. So this might be negative one. This might be negative one half. And this in between negative one and negative two would be negative one and a half. So there's my number line. Let's see where these go. I'm gonna get a different color so we can see them more easily. All right, so this would be negative 0.5. Negative 0.55 would be about there. Negative 0.55 repeating. Then my negative 0.6 would be right next to it. Then I don't have anything else. I'm counting down, now moving down to negative one. Nothing else yet. Nothing in between there and negative one and a half. Right in the middle of these would be my negative 1.75. Oh, and I missed, I skipped. I'm going down now. I still see I have negative 1.625. So that would be just a little bit before it. Okay, so there's where my four numbers would go. I have them in order from um, least to greatest, which would mean starting here. Negative 1.75 is the smallest. Negative 1.625 would be next. Negative 0.6 would be next. And then negative 0.55 repeating is technically the biggest, the greatest out of these.